Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. Happy Monday, preschool peeps. Hi, peeps. I hope you're all hanging in there. Um, <laughs> this, for me, has been, feels like such a long winter. This, uh, yes. I 100% agree with that. Yes, it's been a long week. It's been a long winter. And today, <laughs> yes. today, Alice and I are going to talk about something that's been around for a long time. See how I there did that? Go. Okay. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we're talking, we're going to talk about an, an issue that we sometimes see in classrooms and in schools that really is a generational issue. We were taught for many, many generations that silence is golden. But the question is, is silence really golden in an educational setting? Very often, you know, we still are working really hard to keep kids silent when dynamic education isn't silent. Right. And I feel like, why are you keeping them silent? Is it your goal to teach them to when they're older, be able to communicate with others and be able to interact with others. Because when you go to the workplace, no matter what your workplace is, it's not silent usually. You know, you're not usually working alone. Oh, you know, so oh, like no. in many offices today, they just put in their uh-huh. earbuds and don't talk to each other. But that's yeah, that's an issue. That's yeah, but they need to but are, they, are they like that because they were taught to be silent? You know, I mean, it might be this big circular thing that they, when we were in school, it was a little bit more silent. I don't even remember it being as silent as some classrooms I've seen, but like maybe because they were taught that way, they don't really know how to be in the workplace. So, you know, I, I'm somebody, I'm somebody who needs quiet in order to concentrate. I understand that, but it depends on the task, right? So kids are taking a test. Yes. We want to teach children that this is a time when we need to be silent, but all the time, like I'll walk into classes sometimes, or I'll observe classes sometimes, even virtually. And I'm sort of like, Oh my gosh, why isn't anybody talking in here? This is supposed to be an active time of day. Right. Um, Right. I I think, yeah. I think we really need to examine whether silence is truly golden or not. Yeah. I mean, and when are the appropriate times? When are the appropriate times? Because I'm not saying your classroom should be loud all the time either. You know, it should be where they are allowed to talk whenever they want, but they, I think they need to learn when and where those times are and how are they supposed to be taught? Right. I mean, you children know? can be taught to modulate yeah. their voices. They can be taught to take turns speaking, but they need to practice it. So we have this impression, I think, not only from generations of silence is golden, but also this impression that we got from television when there were television shows showing what were supposed to be a bunch of young kids or classrooms or whatever, that these children were always attentive and they were always following whatever the the supposed teacher told them and they follow along and they're quiet when they're supposed to be, but that's television. Okay. That's not real. It's not real. Television is always an illusion. Yeah. And And I think we have to realize like there's a lot of different types of learning styles out there that some kids need to talk it through or some kids need to move in order to get their brain working. And you're not seeing that on TV. You're seeing just, you know, people sitting in rows and, and sitting and there. But following they're directions characters, perfectly. They're not real people. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, you know. They're <laughs> following directions perfectly. And I'm here to tell you that that does not happen. It doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, but like, you know, like Allison was saying before, there are times when the children need to be quiet. And the question I think becomes, how do we teach them that? Telling them uh, simply telling them stop talking or that dreaded put a bubble in your mouth dreaded because they hold their breath folks. Um, yeah. so <laughs> that d- yeah. the dreaded what I think of as the dreaded put a bubble in it. Um, right. It, Which uh, there's so many different issues them. with that. Yeah. It doesn't teach them because to me, that's just some gimmick that might work. And I say might because you got kids now holding their breath instead of actually breathing, but also like, seriously, I've been in classrooms where they're like, put a bubble in your mouth. And the kid like two seconds ago, pop my bubble. Oh, I had to say something. Okay. It's, no, it's not a get like, 
gimmicks to me don't work. <laughs> Teach the them. Is that? Right. Right. And is, like, is the goal, the goal should always be sort of child facing, right? So yeah. my goal for the child should be they need to learn that there are times when we need to be quieter. If the goal is adult facing, then the goal is I need them to be quieter. Right. No, 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 no. You need to teach them how to be quieter. And I don't know, Allison, when's the last time somebody asked you to put a bubble in your mouth? <laughs> yeah, never. Oh, Honestly, so never. That, that, okay, that wasn't a thing when I was in school because we didn't learn to be quiet that way. Okay, It's <laughs> like, a little, it's a little uh, yeah. Yeah, so, I feel like it's a very gimmicky we'll world out there, you know? So like, it's easy to get played into that, you know, as a teacher, like, oh, okay, let me try that. It might work. And yeah, but like, I think you need to go and teach them, like, we're going into the hallway now. And uh, we've, I think we've had an episode here about how do they really need to be quiet in the hallway? It's a like, whole other issue. I think but, we've uh, talked about this, but like also, have, but say we, we need to be quieter. If you're going to talk to your friend in the hallway, you're not going to scream, you know, like, cause we're in the hallway and there's other people right. having classes. So, so- you know, the question becomes, and what we're going to dig into a little bit in this episode is how do we actually teach them that in, in deeper ways? You know, I, the, so if you've been, by the way, if you've been doing the bubble in your mouth, here's what I'd like you to ask yourself. Would you ever ask an adult to do that? Because if you wouldn't ask an adult to do something, or you wouldn't say something to an adult, because you'd probably get in trouble or be punched for it, then please don't <laughs> yeah. say it to the children. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't they say are, it to the yeah. children. Yeah. Can we just emphasize that the children are people? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like they're people who grow into adults. Okay. <laughs> and you, Cindy's right. I wouldn't ask Cindy, like, Cindy, put a bubble in your mouth right now. Like, I wouldn't do that. You know, <laughs> like, I mean, oh. there's respectful ways for me to ask somebody to be quieter because I need quiet right now, you know, or maybe I need to figure out how to deal with that, you know, like, so. Yeah. Yeah. We need to practice it with them. See, here's the yeah. thing. Children need practice to learn skills. Knowing when to stop talking and not talk and to take turns talking and to lower your voice, these are skills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all skills take practice. Here are some ways you can practice them. Ideally, in early childhood classrooms, there are, there are small group times where teachers are working with small groups of children, not the whole group, mm-hmm. right? You're working with small groups of children and you can actually set up activities that would um, force the children to have to take turns speaking during your small group. And you sit them down and you say, today we're going to practice taking turns talking. Yeah. I'm going to ask questions and we're going to practice taking turns talking. I've actually seen some teachers do this with the old talking stick sort of thing yeah. where they'll say, <laughs> I'm going to hand this to the person whose turn it is to talk and everybody is going to wait their turn and listen. And I've seen teachers do that with young children. Folks, it works. They learn to take turns talking. And in fact, then when they're in a large group, they kind of want that talking item, that talking stick. Um, And I think it also, you just pointed out, teaches them how to listen, which is a big time skill even when you're growing older, like in your adult life, you need to know how to listen to instructions or to people talking so that you can react appropriately, you know, like, and co- communicate appropriately with them. And that teaches them that like, and I, I do do that where you're just, and you say, you have it, a just talking like stick? I don't have a talking stick. I don't Get do one. that, but <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, I do. It probably would help actually. <laughs> I do say we're going to practice how to talk and take turns talking. Yep. We're going to practice how to go back and forth in a conversation. You speak first, you listen, you respond. And I tell them that I don't like make it into like, okay, let's just practice it. And I'm not going to tell them what we're practicing. No, this is what we need to learn. We're going to learn how to communicate with our friends and have a conversation. This, and then let's practice it because then they're thinking about it because they're like, oh, we're practicing something. Oh, wait, I better think about what I need to do. Instead of it being this haphazard thing that then they don't really let it sink in, you know, like, cause they're like, okay, great. I just talked to my friend, like, you know, but they, I think if you tell them like, this is the, t- this is what we're doing and this is what we're practicing and this is what we're going to learn. Then they're like, oh, okay. Now I know, you know, instead of it just happening randomly, cause then it might not, they might not realize it's something important. Also, that they need to remember. 
But I think the truth of humans is that we do. Um, we don't always wait for the person. I know I don't, and you don't, because we've been accused of this many times in in responses to this podcast. <laughs> We, we do sort of, we'll jump in on, on conversations. We will, uh, adults, not just listen and me, but adults talk over <laughs> each other a lot. You know, it's, there's a natural flow to conversation and we need to sometimes let that natural flow happen and just remind kids, you know, things like, you know, he's not he wasn't done speaking. If someone jumps in and says something, you can let them finish and then go back and say, you weren't done speaking. These are the things that the conventions of language, but you know, they're going to be grownups and kind of just like us, they're going to in some way jump in when they feel they have a really important point to make. They have to learn how to do all that. They also, and so you set up these intentional, these intentional times to practice it where you tell them what you're practicing. And it's the same for being quiet whenever you need them to be quiet. If there's some sort of activity going on where people may need to concentrate or you're going to be entering that hallway or an adult comes in to say something and you can't hear them because the kids are you know, being kids and being loud and you need everyone to quiet down. That's another thing that you can practice. There are so many songs out there that when you sing along with the song, it help the children to, they sing loud, they sing soft, they sing loud, they sing soft. So they learn how to control their voice that way when they're really young. But then again, you can also set up times of day and activities and practice where we're going to speak loud and we're going to speak quiet. Right? Yeah. And we're going to, you can practice listening to silence. You can practice when, when no one's talking. Everybody listen. Think about what you hear. And then just, everybody, when you say listen, when I just look at kids and go listen, you know, and way rather than, um, say things to them that you don't hear in the real world. There were plenty of times when I was a classroom teacher where I would just stop talking and look at the yeah, children until they stopped time. talking to see what I was doing. Yeah, it doesn't always work, but yeah, I do, <laughs> I do do that. I used yeah. to just sit there and I'll tell you what, I do that with adults. I was working even on Zoom. I was working with a group of adults the other day and um, they were, they started to just, the conversation just started to fall apart and they started to talk about more personal things. And I literally sat on the Zoom, like just looking at them until they realized, wait, they, they, the adults were kind of like, wait, she stopped talking. Anybody wait, notice she stopped talking? We're in class. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. Um, I should have told she them. stopped I talking. Issues. Something's yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Because um, I think sometimes you just need a reminder. I think even adults need reminders. Like it's easy to get wrapped up in a conversation or get on your own tangents of thoughts and then forget where you are, you know, mm-hmm. and be like, oh, wait, I'm in school. Oh, I need to modify my behavior here. You know what I mean? But like, and I think, but for like an adult can kind of get back in. I think for kids, you need to remind them sometimes. Like I, I do have a boy who, who gets quite loud. Okay. And I'll remind him like, I kind of go like this and he knows like, Oh, she has her hands up for those of you. Not on Oh, sorry. Time. Yeah. I put my hands up like this. Cause I used to have to be like, you know, do you see my ears? They, they work. You don't need to be that loud for me to hear you try saying it in a whisper. And I'm going to stand way back here and see if I can hear you. And I always could hear him. He's like, wait, that works. You, you can actually hear me. I'm like, yeah, I heard everything you said. And then he realized like, Oh, I don't have to talk loud all the time for her to hear me. You know, but he forgets because he's five, you know, and he gets carried away and he gets excited. So then I just kind of like that and like put my hand up and he's like, okay. Or sometimes I'll be like, I can, you know, and just to give him a a clue, like a cue to be like, oh, wait, I need to, because he's five and he doesn't know. Like he needs that right now. But when he's an adult, he might be able to do it on his own. The conversation reminds me of two things. Mm -hmm. There are times when I look at children without being, snarky I'll look at kids and say it's okay I can hear you in the tone in the level my voice at the level at which I would like them to respond right my voice being quieter I'll be like it's okay I can hear you because they may not realize that I can hear them if there's a lot of action going on also it reminds me of this I was observing a class on zoom um at the end of summer and so you're on zoom And the kids were all talking and the teacher wanted them to listen. And on Zoom, 
she told them to put a bubble in their mouths. And I'm sitting here like you have a mute button. <laughs> there was, you're not in prison. There was no reason to do that to them. So all I could think was, you have a mute button and now they're all holding their breath. They were like, definitely holding their breath. I could see oh, when the, sure. when the call yeah. ended, <laughs> when the call ended, I said to her, um, you know, when you ask children to do that, they're holding their breath. Also, do you know where the mute all button is? Cause I can teach you where the mute all button is. <laughs> it's, it's okay to use the mute all button when you're working okay. on zoom. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I also feel like that sometimes too, like I have a couple distance learners that, that like to speak out. And I think it's, it's hard because they want to be a part of the group and they feel a little bit like they're not, you yeah, know, that's hard. So it's really hard, but I will like, just, if it's at a time where they're not supposed to talk, I'll mute them. And eventually they kind of get the hint like, Oh, you didn't hear me. No, I didn't because it's not time for you. <laughs> it was not time. I was instructing the kids on, on a lesson and you should have been listening, you know, but after a few times of just clicking that mute button, just for that one little student, you know, she, she'll be like, oh, okay, wait, no, I need to stop, you know? <laughs> and then I'd be like, you can save those thoughts in your head and tell me later, you know, Skill, though. when it is Sit. time. Yeah. You know I teach them that all the time. Like keep the answer in your head. Don't call it out and just wait, you know? And with that though, I think the problem with that is when we're, we're keeping thoughts in our heads that uh, we're now not listening to what's being said. And it yeah. really is the gift, honestly, the gift of teaching as adults on Zoom one of the first things I always say when I'm doing trainings or teaching classes on Zoom is that the gift of this is that you have a chat. So when you think of a question, please type it in the chat and get it off your mind so you can hear me. And that's something you can't do when we're in person. And people yeah. acknowledge that. They they nod and say, yeah, that actually is that's good. That's what's great about that's doing it with adults. about the technology yeah. with adults, but with kids, we need to kids just teach them. We need to teach them, you know, and they're not able to go over to a chart paper on the wall necessarily and write their questions down on a parking lot sheet right. and all that stuff. Yeah. So we just have to understand when they jump in and we have to make it so that we're still teaching them. So to sum this up, um, we're going to say set up intentional times during the day with small groups of children where you're intentionally teaching them the skills of taking turns talking and modulating their voices, take advantage of all those songs and stuff. Uh, and remember that the goal needs to be at the, about the skill that you're teaching the children, not what they, you want them to do for you, if that makes yeah. sense. Right. Right. It shouldn't be all adult motivated, I guess. Okay. Is that the right word? I'm not sure. And, and I'm also going to give anyway. this disclaimer. If you were <laughs> yeah. sitting during this episode thinking Cindy and Allison interrupt each other a lot or talk, oh, uh, we know. Oh, yeah, we know. They're yeah. to write a hate mail. We know. Um, and, and you know what? That's okay. We... And, we're still friends. It's okay. It's <laughs> and sometimes you have to just look at the kids and say, okay, that's how they operate. And that's, yeah. and if they're not upset by it, folks, yeah. by the way, if they're not upset by it, I'm not sure why we're getting so upset right. by it. And there's times I let the kids interrupt me during things because so many awesome like subjects have come up based on their interruptions that have turned into like huge units of other things that we'll learn, you yeah, know, and I, yeah. and that's because I, I allowed that to happen. And then I just like, okay, now it's time to get back to what we were doing. And I'll like, you know, but like it has, it, you can learn some amazing things and you can even use that to be like, Oh, the kids are really interested in this right now. Let me teach them about that. You know, if you're going to do learning by interest, which is how I feel we should be learning, but Hey, <laughs> so maybe, maybe one of the other pieces of advice is really watch the kids and see if they're upset by it Yeah. or if it's just a natural flow of conversation in the room sometimes. Yeah. All right. All that, that gave we, I think we gave people things to think about yeah. um, and, and letting them know that we know how we operate, but thanks. And thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And so <laughs> we're going to conclude this episode. Uh, we're actually, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that this year of craziness has enabled Allison and I to do was to um, video and record episodes kind of one at a time. We had to start to do that as things, as the news changed and things happened. And we started to record more individual episodes, but today we're recording more than one. So you're going to see this outfit again if you're on YouTube. 
Um, and we're going to go do that. So if you're not, if you're, <laughs> if you're, um, you know, not watching us on YouTube, you didn't hear me say that. Allison, please yeah, encourage the people to get in touch with us. <laughs> Okay. Please go to our website, howpreschoolteachersdoit.com. You can find a comment section there that you can write us directly there. You can also find us on Facebook, How Preschool Teachers Do It Podcast. You can message us there, and we are pretty good about getting back to people pretty quickly, no matter how you reach us. Rate us five stars on anywhere that you can rate us, no matter what podcast provider if you, you can. are. Some of them are saying, oh, some people are telling me they can't always, but whatever. Oh, well, if you can. You want to do the five stars. And if you want to catch us on the YouTube so you could see that I'm in the same outfit in the next one, <laughs> do that too. Because <laughs> yeah. we are there. Yay. Yeah. Yay. We do own more clothes. Okay. We will catch you <laughs> next time on the podcast, folks. We wish you much hope. Yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs>